So these are the 10 days that we have to maximize and benefit from. And some of the things that we can do, do during these days is, is making the takbir. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. This takbir is something that you have to do randomly during these days and the nights. Whenever you have like a couple of minutes, just say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. And feel these words. Feel the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you say Allahu Akbar. That he is the creator of this world. He's the designer of this universe. That he's in charge of everything. He's the greatest of everything. La ilaha illallah. No one has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise is due to Allah. Everything he does is good. Everything he says is good. Everything he allows to happen. Everything he allows to take place is good according to his wisdom. And you live in these profound meanings. They shake you from inside. And then the culmination of these days is the day of Arafah, which is the ninth day of the, of the, of the month. And there's an authentic narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal Qad akhada min dhahri Adam dhurriyatahu fi yawmi Arafah فنثرهم كالذر ثم قال لهم ألست بربكم قالوا بلى الله سبحانه وتعالى before us coming into this world he brought the progeny of Adam all of us all of us in a shape that he knows as atoms as small creatures Allah brought us and then he dispersed us then he addressed us directly Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? Am I not your creator? Am I not your designer? Am I the one who deserves your worship and devotion? Am I not the one who is complete in his names and attributes? And we all said, yes, indeed, we testify. We all said that, whether you remember it now or not. And this incident is mentioned in the Quran, but this hadith clarifies that it happened on the day of Arafah. And this makes you aware of the beauty and the profoundness of this day. When the day of Arafah comes the ninth day of the, of the Hijjah, you shouldn't miss out on this day. It's such a profound day in our history. It's on the day of Arafah that Allah spoke to us before coming in this world. And we confirmed that we testify that Allah is the Lord and the designer and the creator of this universe. And he's the one who deserves our worship. And that's why the day of Arafah is so profound. It's so profound and those who know how to use it, they know the special feeling they have on the day of Arafah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says that the day of Arafah is probably the best of days, one of the best of days. The Messenger ﷺ says in the hadith, خير الدعاء دعاء دعاء يوم عرفة. Among the best dua you can make is the dua on the day of Arafah. So don't miss out on that. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ يُعْتِقُ فِيهِ عَبْدَهُ مِنْ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةِ There is no day where Allah, or كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام, there is no day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most likely to forgive a person and free him from the hellfire like the day of Arafah. There is no possibility, there is no likability it's most likely that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free a person from the hellfire. The most possibility and probability is on the day of Arafah. So don't miss out on that day. Don't play games on that day. Don't waste your time in social media on that day. Don't waste your time on anything on that day but connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's, it's very likely that you could be saved from the hellfire on that day. The Prophet ﷺ mentions in the hadith that shaitan on the day of Arafah feels so desperate because of, the, because of the amount of mercy descending from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his creation. That's the day of Arafah. 